guys that uh, just over five miles. We have uh, what appears to be an Indonesian type two that has lit outside the uh, box of the uh, memorandum of understanding. It's 410, altering 230. It is a well-rehearsed procedure for the crew of the Fremantle-class patrol boat HMAS Gawler. One day out of their home port Darwin and they've nabbed their first illegal. There are hundreds, probably thousands of these and bigger fishing boats stretched across the thousands of kilometres of our northern coast. The Navy is the thin grey line. He also knows that he's not allowed to fish here and we've also told him that if we find him here again, he will be arrested. He will be arrested, over. Gawler is one of six patrol boats stationed in Darwin that have been committed to the protection of Australia's rich fishing grounds. While they are Navy first and foremost, they can find themselves working for customs, quarantine or immigration at a moment's notice. But it is the endless search for foreign boats, taking our fish or trochus, that occupies them most. This uh, lucky lucky lahat didalam pra lucky lucky uh, okay you guys go off and, and have a look around um, first thing I want to know is if, if they've got a, an engine of any sort or in this case uh, we primarily wanted to check it out to make sure that it was not a motorized vessel if it had been a motorized vessel we would have arrested it and uh, take for in fact escorted it to back to Australia for further investigation. Shooting practice on the Gawler's 4060 gun. While rare that the Navy would turn its weapons on Indonesian or Taiwanese boats, there have been several recent instances where, after firing across the bow of a fleeing trawler, Navy gun crews have been on the point of firing directly at fishing boats before the master has surrendered. Current intelligence gathered from fishing crews already captured suggest between 20 and 30 larger Indonesian boats are poised to hit rich trochus grounds that lie outside an area where Australia allows Indonesia's traditional fishermen to gather the valuable shellfish or catch shark. That legal fishing area lying inside our 200 mile Australian fishing zone starts at Ashmore Reef just 80 nautical miles south of Indonesia. Coast Watch planes operated with great success by Australian customs and flying out of Broome, Darwin and Cairns patrol the fishing zone and greatly expand the area that can be policed. But it still falls to the patrol boats or people like Sue and Brian Lambert who spend nine months of the year at Ashmore Reef to keep tabs on boat movements. Last year boarded about 130 prowls and um, we also uh, have a role to play for the eyes and ears for Coast Watch to report any um, cruising yachts or any other vessels or aircraft that we see in the area. Only necessity could force these people to spend months at sea in pathetically small boats with next to no provisions and nothing more than a cheap compass to guide them. This is their prize, Trochus. The pickings at Ashmore are slim. At Scott Reef, hundreds of nautical miles to the south, not much better. He said he used to get a lot of trochus, but now there's less and less trochus to be collected. The prize trochus grounds are in King Sound and Rolly Shoals, to the north and west of Broome. Stretched thinly as it is, the Navy will cover thousands of sea miles to patrol these waters. When the weather turns, it can get extremely uncomfortable out here. This is mild though, they say, compared to some of the weather that the Gawler and the other patrol boats have encountered. And it would have to get a lot worse before they would call off the search for and boarding of the illegals. While the price for trochus, a source of cheap mother of pearl, remains at about eight to nine thousand dollars a ton, there will always be a threat to Australia's territorial waters. The jailings and deportation of illegal fishermen in Broome yesterday won't be the end of it. It's also proof that Coast Watch and the Royal Australian Navy are getting the job done.